Hey everyone, it's Friday, January 23rd, let's talk PlayStation. Hey, what's going on everyone? Before we get into this episode, I wanted to cover up one news story that I actually didn't cover in the uh, uh, original recording of this episode. Um, and it's not like kind of a... it's The reason why I didn't cover it initially, um, you know, I consciously chose not to cover it during the recording because, well, I thought it was fake. Um, but then I realized, you know, if I elbow this thing, some people are probably going to ask about it, so I should probably just still talk about it. Um... So earlier this week, there was a report from Samsung. That they uh, basically made higher density uh, GDDR5 RAM, and they specifically said in a press release that it, uh, it could possibly be used in laptops or consoles. And when this news story came out, people thought, oh, okay, well, the only console that uses GDDR5 is PlayStation 4. And what company redesigns the, their systems every, like, every few years? Sony does that with the PlayStation 4. Um, so people were initially uh, immediately thinking, okay, PlayStation 4 Slim, it's coming soon. Then, just like a few hours ago, on the 22nd, just yesterday, uh, images came out of an apparent PlayStation 4 Slim, I'm using air quotes there, and I'm probably showing pictures of this uh, supposed leak right now. Um, so this is apparently the PS4 Slim. Uh, right off the bat, I'm just going to tell you, I think these look fake. Um, you know, there's a number of dead giveaways, which is the fact that, well, you know, it's, there's, someone's taking a picture of it instead of screen capping it. Um, it says confidential all over it. Um, it's just one of those things where you look at it and it looks totally fake. Um, there's like a 1% sliver out of, like, in, inside me that's saying, you know, there's, maybe it's real because Sony is really bad with leaks. Sony, like, has tons of leaks all the time. And I remember the first two times the PS3 revisions were, were leaked, everyone said, oh, it's fake. And then, like, it turned out, out to be true. So there's, like, that 1% where it's like, maybe, but I'm inclined to say this is totally fake. Um... Some people are saying it's too early. It's not super early. I mean, if you're looking at this, th if if you're looking at a PS4 Slim being released, like say holiday 2015, that's pretty much two years after, and that you know Sony's done that with past PlayStation hardware, so it's not super early. But uh, if you want to think of actual reasons why they should, that why they're not going to do a PS4 Slim this early, is because well, current PlayStation 4 hardware is selling phenomenal. There's no reason for them to kind of jumpstart sales in any, any way, shape, or form. They're still making profit off the current hardware, so why get into a whole production and manufacturing process and possibly, you know, have some startup costs for new hardware when you're, you're already doing so well with the current hardware? You haven't even had any official price cuts to the current hardware. Um, uh, you know, there's I, I just see way too many reasons as to why it's not going to be now and why this fake is clearly fake. But, um... That's just my personal opinion, and it just kind of adds up when you see a real story from Samsung, and then you get this, like, just a few days later of somebody taking a picture of their computer, um, so, you know, there's that. Uh, I will say that there totally will be a PS4 Slim, I, like, there's some people that actually think that won't happen, of course it'll happen, Sony does that all the time. And, you know, the components of PS4 this time around are, like, you know, basic off-the-shelf parts. Uh, so this could, you know, and PS4 hardware is, like, not, you know, it's not new. It's not like PS4 super, super, super powerful, like PC powerful. You know, this is uh, basic hardware. That it can totally get sized down even further. Um, and I guarantee you Sony is definitely working on it right now. I, I can't vouch for these pictures being real, but I can guarantee you Sony's definitely working on uh, a PlayStation, PlayStation 4 Slim right now. It's just a matter of when we'll see it that I don't know. Uh, anyway, I hope that uh, covers up that news story, and I'll, let's get on with the, uh, the actual show. Not a whole lot of super specific PlayStation news this week. It was kind of more of a, a Microsoft thing because they had their Windows 10 event and they were showing off all this crazy holographic stuff and then streaming with Xbox One and all that. Um, so not a whole lot of really super specific PlayStation stuff, but we still got some things to discuss. Like the exciting news of themes. There are tons of themes now in the North American PlayStation Store. I believe 40-something were added just recently. Um, premium themes, $2.99 each. Um, but it's it's one of those things where they're third-party themes. Sony Sony did not make these. These were made by third-party developers, independent independent people that you know. I guess Sony you know is opening the tools and letting letting people make these themes and put them up on the store. And they did this with PlayStation 3. PlayStation 3 is hundreds of themes that are like premium themes that you can buy that you know third-party developers have made. So it's good that you know uh, that's like started like the floodgates have opened now for PS4 in that regard. Some of them are pretty awful looking, <laughs> but. Uh, they are available now if uh, one of them you know meets your fancy then you can purchase one and make your customize your ps4 just a little bit it's still kind of sad that uh, the tools aren't open to the public i believe because with playstation 3 
anybody could use those tools and make a custom theme. You could download custom free themes offline, uh, off the internet, and then you know plug a USB drive into your PS3, install them, and you could have anything. You could have porn themes if you wanted to. Um, but there is that. All right, so just a little heads up on that 10% discount we were all promised. Basically, that is starting today for the PlayStation Store. So starting January 23rd till the 27th, uh, go to the PlayStation Store and you can get 10% off an entire cart purchase. Uh, so add up a bunch of stuff into the cart. And it's my understanding that it will be like automatically applied or something at the end of the checkout process. Um, but basically, that is starting right now. The caveat here is that you can't use it on PlayStation Now. Uh, PlayStation Plus subscriptions, Music Unlimited, um, and you can't use it on pre-ordering games, which uh, initially I think Sony said you could, now they're saying you can't, so that kind of sucks, but uh, that's the caveat there. So it's available now. Uh, get any sort of purchase in now while you can for 10% off. So this new story isn't like super Sony related. It's kind of like indirectly Sony related, but uh, we totally have to talk about this because we all know uh, Jack and Daxter. It's like my favorite franchise ever. Uh, a lot of us love Jack and Daxter. Um, one YouTuber by the name of Floor Dan released a video where he was uh, basically this guy is working on recreating Jack 2. Uh, so Jack 2, he's gonna be he, he's gonna be calling this thing Jack 2 Renegade Reborn. Uh, he's using CryEngine to make this thing. I'm probably showing you footage of it right now. Of course, credits to him, Floor Dan, YouTuber Floor Dan. It looks absolutely incredible. People do this all the time, really. Um, they'll use CryEngine or you know whatever the, whatever sort of engine they're using to recreate maybe an old game, one of their favorites, uh, and, and modernize it and make it look uh, absolutely beautiful. As you can. And see the footage I'm showing you is uh is um the the pumping station in Jack 2. That's a great level. I mean Jack 2 is actually my favorite Jack. Uh, a lot of people actually don't like that one, but I love Jack 2. Um, and it looks obviously incredible because this is you know this is an old game being modernized and it looks incredible. There's great detail and everything. This is one of those things where it's like you know of course I dreamed about this. This would be awesome. This would be great. Um, the you know a few things here is that one will. Usually when stuff like this happens, when uh, you know somebody wants to like take an old game and make it in the CryEngine or whatever, um, usually it almost never comes out, honestly. We see projects like this all the time. Um, sometimes uh, the, the actual company that owns like the IP will send a cease and desist because they don't want the person to finish it. Or the person themselves can't actually do it because, well, it's a, a huge undertaking. It probably would take them years to finish this project, um, especially if it's just them. So. I'm not holding my breath on this project actually being finished, but like, hey, if it does, then Jack 2 Renegade Reborn will be like on PC and it'll look absolutely incredible and modernized. But again, I'm not holding my breath out because this stuff like never, like hardly ever materializes. But it does look totally cool. I'm definitely, I, I like when I saw this at first, I like totally appreciated it. I was like, oh, it looks awesome. That totally looks awesome. Makes me want a modern Jack game made by Naughty Dog. Um, you know, I've talked about this a few times now. I don't think it's going to be happening anytime soon. If it does happen, uh, it's one of those things where I think it, I think it'll happen like like way down the road because Naughty Dog's focusing on uh, these, you know, like Last of Us and Uncharted. They're focusing on projects like that right now. All right, time for a pretty cheesy news story. I don't see a whole lot of people actually talking about this. Um, there's a new teaser website up called achillingfeeling.com. Um, now, if you go to this website. Uh, it's got like kind of a icy cold looking layout. It says five days. There's a bunch of writing kind of in the background uh, This is uh, clearly uh, or not clearly But there's a lot of similarities and hints that this is possibly a teaser from Quantic Dream And that it is possibly a teaser for a sequel to Indigo Prophecy one of Quantic Dream's games uh, Indigo Prophecy came out in 2005 I think uh, for PS2 and Xbox, um, it was like one of their like first games into like they, you know the whole interactive drama genre thing that they were going for, um, and there's a lot of similarities because that game, you know, it's like the icy texture and everything, and the words in the back are kind of um, relatable to the actual game. Um, and if you remember a few months back, uh, Quantic Dream said that they had an announcement to make in January, like early 2015. Uh, so this could possibly be it. It probably is it. Uh, the I mean, when it, uh, and if you go to the website and it says five days, it's it is counting down. Two days ago it said seven days and everything, and so it is counting down. So we should see uh, an answer to this very very soon. And is it going to be that? Who knows? Okay, time for probably our most interesting news story of the week. This is uh, one of those news stories where you can't like completely believe it because it's not like a hundred percent, but you know you'll have to just take their word for it. Um, so apparently a Reddit user, Athy, is a, um, an artist, or she was an artist, at Sony Bend. 
uh, and she revealed a couple of things about Sony Ben. Now, we all know Sony Ben is a developer that Sony owns, uh, and they haven't made a game in a while. Their last game was Uncharted Golden Abyss on the PlayStation Vita. They've been working on a title since then. We know that they're working on a PS4 game, but that's pretty much all we know. Reddit user Athy uh, discussed a few things about Sony Bend. She didn't tell us what they're currently working on, but she did say that she apparently knows what they're working on. But she just closed a couple of details about the studio, and you know, there's pretty interesting stuff in there. Uh, one thing being, uh, if there's going to be a new siphon filter, she basically said uh, no chance. Um, the studio's creative, direct, uh, creative director, John Garvin, uh, pretty much kind of got tired of doing siphon filter games. Uh, and just does not want to do any more in the near future. So if you are expecting a new siphon filter, that probably won't be happening, at least based on her word. Um, what they're currently doing or what they were doing after Uncharted Golden Abyss uh, was a number of things. It's just one of those things where, you know, you, the studio's done with the game, so they start to do the creative process. They start to work on, like, you know, tech demos and stuff or, you know, just sort of like, you know, create resources and just see what they can come up with and see what actual idea is going to get greenlit and basically what she was getting at is that they were making a whole bunch of projects and ideas and you know small little startups and none of them were getting greenlit and they were uh, most of the projects ended up getting canned um from what she's saying is that sony wanted sony bend to do another uncharted on vita um and sony bend didn't or naughty dog didn't want that to happen because naughty dog didn't want to have the you know the uncharted name get reused so many times and have sort of like this this brand burnout of Uncharted, so Naughty Dog didn't really like that idea. Sony wanted another Uncharted. Uh, Sony Bend uh, ended up pitching an infamous title for Vita. Uh, apparently, that did not go through either. Um, they made a, they started working on like a sci-fi type game that didn't get that didn't get greenlit. They started working on sort of a steampunk style game that didn't get greenlit, and that's when they got transitioned over to PlayStation 4 and Unreal 4 and started working on a project there. Uh, because apparently they would have more luck getting a project greenlit and uh, it seems like most of the reasons for their for their past projects not getting like started and funded was that there was like you know the standard stuff that usually a multi-billion dollar corporation would tell you based on certain projects like oh this is you know there's too much saturation in this in this genre don't do that genre um you know, you've got a game like, you know, this game, there's a game that's very similar to this that's going to be due to come out uh, within that time frame or, you know, this idea has already kind of been done and it's not selling well, so don't do that. Um, that sort of stuff. Uh, so that's pretty much it. That's kind of the, the only details that she disclosed. Sounds pretty accurate if she's uh, uh, being truthful about everything, if she is who she says she is, which she is, I believe. So, um Really interesting stuff, though. We don't know a whole lot about Sony Ben. They're kind of always, uh, you know, in the background when it comes to like bigger Sony developers, like you know Sony Santa Monica or Naughty Dog or Sucker Punch. Um, but it's interesting to see that uh, you know we could have had an infamous title possibly on Vita. We actually discussed that a few times on this channel and the possibilities of that happening. And you know I predicted it at one point, but I predicted it from Sucker Punch, not Sony Bend. Um, uh, the interesting thing is that, you know, Sony did want another Uncharted on Vita. She apparently said this is because Sony wants content on Vita. Um, but I can also understand Sony's decision to say, well, don't do this game on Vita or don't do that game because, you know, they don't sell well. There's Everyone keeps for, forgetting that business side of things. Uh, Sony definitely wants content on Vita, but they can't push content if it's not going to sell because the whole reason why they created Vita in the first place, it's a business thing. They made Vita to so sell Vitas and sell games and make money off of it. Uh, if you're not going to make money off a game that you make for it, then it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to do it in the first place. Um, but it, it really, really interesting stuff. I'm, I'm glad that news story broke. It was just a, you know, broke just today, I think, or like, you know, 30 something hours ago. So that was an interesting read for sure. Anyway, those are just some of the news stories I want to talk about with you guys this week. Uh, that concludes this week's episode of Let's Talk PlayStation. I'm Ryan Badecki. Thanks so much for talking with me. See you guys all next Friday.